Hello and welcome to Morris Park. I'm Clyde Morris. And this is just a little update from our winter uh, storm we had. Everything seems to have done real well. It really just took a lot of work, pre-planning, and knowing what to do to keep all these alive. Now if you look here, I've still got pads on the northern windows. Reason being is because our wind comes from that direction so often during the winter. And so, I've kind of elected to keep these covered for now until weather really warms up this spring. Now right now, it is about 65 degrees. Looking pretty good. Today we had quite a bit of a warm up. We had uh, the temperature get up to 55 today. Tomorrow, it's going to get to about 60. And surprisingly enough, I even have a few things that are coming into bud. This is my great big Eubelmania pectinifera that I've had for a very long time. This is probably almost a 40-year-old plant now. And it's got a couple little buds there, and it hasn't actually bloomed in many years. So uh, something must be right with it to the, this year. Another one I have is this little uh, Parodia Havabergii. And you see it's got a nice little flower bud on it right there. So that's getting prepared for uh, blooming. And you know, folks, we're only a couple months away from flowering and so forth and from watering our plants and getting them going again. I figure about March, I'm going to start reviving all this stuff. A great big Echinocactus crusonii. And I'm going to get this all ready and going by March. But right now, I think this weekend I'm going to have to give a little bit of water, I think, to a few things because it was just so dry in here. My lavender there didn't do too well. It just kind of dried out. I think the heat blowing out from the shop there just kind of dried it completely. My Schlumbergera Christmas cacti or uh, Thanksgiving cacti are still doing pretty good. They're still blooming good. A lot of buds, a lot of flowers. This is my Mammillaria Haneana. And it's got a couple flower buds starting on it too, so it's getting ready to gear up. Now this little gracilis has been blooming actually for a couple months. And then just kind of carrying on here. But yeah, everything did real well. And some I'm going to show you here is how some of these cacti prepare for winter. Now if you were watching my videos back in the summer when I got my Cory fan the Viviparas, you're probably thinking, looking at this, that man, they shrunk big time. These used to be about twice as tall as they are now and twice as thick. This is what they're supposed to do. Out on the plains right now uh, in the United States, these are growing all over the plains and such from north to south. And this is what they do. They just shrivel up, hunker down. They get covered in snow and ice and everything. But they stay dry pretty much until all that snow melts. Now, when I lived in North Dakota, these plants here used to stay under snow for quite a few months. And then, in the springtime, around April or so, the snow will start melting. And about May to June, they'll start blooming some big purple flowers. And I'm hoping I get some from these right here. But that's what they're supposed to do. They shrivel up into a little ball like that so they can kind of hug the ground and keep close and stay a bit warmer than they normally would, even though they stand temperatures well below zero. I don't have them outside here because of the fact that... Uh, here it just stays too wet and I don't want these to get wet and we did a lot of freezing and thawing here in the Ozarks instead of just staying cold like it does out of the plains uh, for the most part so I'm just going to uh, keep these guys in here not water them not yet and about uh, a month or two months maybe late February maybe March a couple months I'll start watering them again and see if I can get those great big purple flowers to come out on them. That'd be awesome. But yeah, everything looks like it came out really well. 
It took me about, <clears throat> excuse me, took me about two days to run everything back from the house that I uh, took up to the house. All my rare and old and uh, unusual plants that were really special to me that I took up to the house. I brought them all back here. It took about two days, let's say. And I carried them down this five-gallon bucket. Back and forth in a five-gallon bucket. All I did was cover the top and carry them back and forth. The other ones, like some of the larger plants that would not fit into the bucket, I used a towel and just uh, covered them up, kind of like such, and then carried them back down. So yeah, everything came out real well. Uh, I know a lot of people in my area that had lots of problems with this storm. And that's in the way of busted pipes, frozen pipes. You don't want that. You want to be prepared and not have that. And the way to avoid a lot of this, <clears throat> if you look there, there's some little flower buds starting to form on my uh, Euphorbia Enigma. Awesome. But the way to avoid this, one, if you're on a well, like we are, have a heat source inside your well house. If you don't, then you're probably going to end up with it froze at the well house. Now, we have a 250-watt heat lamp that we keep actually in the well house. And that stays right on those pipes coming out of the ground. <clears throat> Pardon me. That way, nothing freezes at the well. And any time we've ever had our water freeze up, it's been at the well. The other thing is, in your home, leave your water running at a little trickle. Just a little trickle from each one of your faucets, bathrooms, kitchen, and such. You want to do this. If you don't, you're going to end up in a bad way. Those pipes will freeze and they will bust. And then you're going to be into thousands of dollars worth of repair when you could have avoided all that. Now, the only damage that I did get here <clears throat> was my big Euphorbia Resinifera. You can see it's cut off there. Now, it didn't freeze. What happened is that thing had just gotten so crazy and was growing out and over a lot of things and over the edge of the pot. When I tried to move it, it just started breaking. And I thought, well, this would be a good chance just to take cuttings and restart it. So that's what I've done here. I've taken these great big cuttings. These are the big ones. These great big cuttings. I have a couple laying here. Some of the rougher ones. And couple days I'll be able to just set them down in some dry soil, which is what I'm going to do, and stake them up, because these things, you can see how they've grown curved, and that's because of how they were growing out of the pot, they were kind of growing out and over the edge of the pot, and up, and so I need to restart this and get them back to where they should be, and get them back to be looking nice. I originally got these, at least 40 years ago, when I was going to Pasadena City College out in California here in Pasadena, California, and on my way, I used to ride my bicycle, and on my way, one of the sidewalk areas, they cut a whole bunch of succulents and euphorbias and such away from the sidewalk because they were growing out the sidewalk. There were cuttings laying everywhere, and so I grabbed up one of these cuttings, and that's this today. So pretty soon, I'll be putting this back in some soil and getting this going again, stake it up, and by springtime, I'd say we'll get to growing again. This is something I recently did too. Decided to take my uh, string of hearts, my Syrupegia woody eye, and put it on a little trellis because it's just been all over the place. For a long time, I just wound it around like a big bird nest. <laughs> but this summer, it just grew so much that it was just piling out of the pot, getting caught on things. So I decided, after seeing this little uh, Christmas star at Walmart, little metal star, it was super cheap. And so I bought that. In fact, no, it wasn't at Walmart. It was a dollar store. And that's where I got that. I got this at the dollar store. And it was like a dollar something for the star. But it made a real neat trellis for it. And it keeps it up out of the way. But yep, everything uh, looking good. Our Medusas are probably going to need a little water. This Mirai is uh, pretty shriveled. And so that I don't lose the branches off this, I think I'm just going to go ahead and water it. Uh, this weekend when it warms up real good tomorrow's going to be almost 60 degrees in fact it is going to be 60 degrees uh, from what I saw on the news and so 
I'll go ahead and water a few of these things so they're not too, too dried out. So I had this uh, fan in here and the heat going full blast and it just dries it out really dry. And really that's an advantage. It may sound strange, but that is an advantage because of the fact that being so dry, if it does drop below temperature in here, things aren't as likely to be damaged as badly. It, uh, basically what it does is it kind of empties the cells out of most of the water in these plants. And so if the freeze comes, it's kind of like a water bottle. If it's half full, it'll probably freeze and not bust. But if it's full, it's going to bust. But anyhow, I just wanted to give you guys an update on how I was doing here. And how all the plants were doing and how I made it through. Remember folks, you got a winter storm coming in, prepare. Always prepare. If you don't, you will be sorry. You'll lose everything you've put your time and money into. You'll have to pay somebody thousands of dollars to come out and fix your plumbing when it all could have been avoided by leaving that water running a little bit, keeping your heat up, and preparing. As you saw in my last video, I had all these windows padded with the furniture pads like I have here. And that's pretty much what kept my temperature really good. Most of all my temperature gets lost to the roof. And there wasn't much I could do about that at the time. But, we made it through. I think the lowest it got in here was like 39 degrees. And that's when I got it to warm back up by padding the windows. Anyhow, this is Clyde Morris from Morris Park. Hope you all have a wonderful week ahead. Hope things are warming up for you if you're living in a cold area. And I hope you made it through the storm if you live in a cold area without much of anything happening. Take care, folks. Thank you for joining me this evening. Bye-bye.